Hey guys, what's up? So as you know, we just finished a three-part series of crucial, high-priority things every RVer should be carrying with them at all times. This was not your typical must-have video. This video series covered a lot of very important information to equip you and your RV to prevent unnecessary mishaps, high costly repairs, grief, and frustration. If you haven't watched that three-part series, I highly recommend you do. Well, in that three-part series, one of the things we covered was the importance of a three-stage filtering system and a water softener. Yep, a water softener. So Joni and I just got through testing our water and we are in need to recharge our softener. So today, I'm gonna to take you through the easy steps on how it, what it takes to recharge an on-the-go water softener. Details coming up on RV Street. Okay, let's get right to it. So how do you know when the water softener needs to be regenerated? Well, you test the water. We carry with us some test strips and in this bottle, you have a bunch of these. And you take this test strip and you dip it in the water. You pull the test strip out and you can see right there, it needs to be way down here, but look where it is. It's way up here in the 250 margin. That means that the water softener needs to be regenerated. When you have high hardness like this, this is what causes buildup, calcium magnesium buildup deposits on your water heater, in your appliances, in your plumbing lines, all that kind of nonsense. And you don't want that. That's why I so highly recommend anybody, especially those who are full timing and you're moving from park to park, state to state, you never know where your water's coming from. And you need to keep those deposits out of your system. Well, we can see right here that we are due for a change. So let's get started and I'll show you how to regenerate the water softener so we go all the way down here into the green area. Okay, so you can see here, we have tapped into our water supply right here and I put a Y here. So the house that we're staying at, they still have their water and here is my Y, my regulator and my first Camco SETI filter. We're gonna take and turn our water off first. And now we're gonna to go to the coach. So here we are at the back of the coach and here is our on the go water softener. And like I said, we change this about every three months and we also do our filters and everything. But we just turned off the water. So there's still pressure in that line. So here's what you have to do first. Use my trusty knee pad. <laughs> you gotta save your knees. So I take right here on my fresh water valve, I take it and I turn it to tank fill. But what that did is that released the remaining pressure that is in the water lines. You can see here, I'm going to give you a quick overview. Here is my main water line coming where we just turned it off. It comes up, it comes through here and it comes up into my disconnection here, this quick disconnect, and it comes into my second steady filter, into my 0.5 carbon filter. And from there it goes on around, and you see this here? It comes into the water softener. See, there was no really pressure there because we released it up over here. But I wanted to show you one thing here before we get into regeneration. If I take off the other side, I, when we get ready to go somewhere, we're moving to a different location, you see this here? These two hoses right here I had specially made and I store those, I bring them up through the hole, of course, and I just store them up in the bay. So when we get to our new locations, I take them out, I funnel them through the hole, through the hole, and boom, I pop it on here, pop it on there, bring my water hose up into here, and I'm done. It takes me about two, maybe three minutes to hook up my water and my water softener. Okay, so let's get back to where we were. So we've taken off this first hose off of the water softener. We're gonna go ahead and just bring this up out of the way 
and we're going to set it up here where we don't have to worry about it. The on-the-go water softener has to be regenerated about every three months. It just depends on how much you use it, but regular use about every three months. So in order to regenerate, you have to back flush it first. The flow of the water normally comes in here, out here, and into the coach. I've even labeled it right here. You see that? It says out. That way I always remember. So since we're going to back flush it, we have to reverse that process. We want the water to come in here and out there. So I'm going to take my channel locks, which I carry with me in the wet bay all the time. I keep an extra pair right here. And I take this quick disconnect off. And when you buy the on-the-go uh, water softener, it comes with an adapter. Okay? And I've put another quick disconnect on the adapter. This is what you normally get. But to make things easy, I just put my quick disconnect on there. It stays here in my little bowl of little parts that I use all the time. And now I put this connector on here. Give it a little snug. And then I take my water line again. You see which line I'm using? It's the one that comes up here, through here, through here, and out. And this is, when I turn the water back on, it's going to come through here into the water softener. And now I'm going to go turn the water back on at full stream. And I'm going to let it shoot out here for about seven minutes. They recommend five to ten. I'm going to let it go, yeah, seven or eight. It's all, it's all good. So let's go turn the water back on. Okay, so you can see now we have a full stream. I did not open that up part way, half way. I opened it up all the way. And we're going to let that back flush now for about eight minutes. Okay, so it's been eight minutes. And I've gone and shut the water off. And as you can see, it's not streaming out anymore. And of course, we don't have any pressure here because the water is off and these are open. So I'm going to take this and store it back up in here. And I'm going to take the adapter off. And as a precaution, what I do before I put my quick disconnect back on here, I have found that these nylon adapters right here, it's a good idea to put a little Teflon tape on them. And for those of you who don't know, you always wrap Teflon tape in a clockwise position. Okay, doesn't need a much, three or four wraps. And the reason you put it on clockwise is because when you put this on, when you put your fitting on, whether it's this or any other kind of plumbing fitting, when you put the quick disconnect back on, it's now turning uh, in the same direction that the Teflon tape is going. And it'll actually just kind of fit better. If, you, if I was to have done it opposite, if I would have counterclockwise that tape and put this on, it would all start unraveling and it wouldn't seat well. So Teflon tape, always put on, on clockwise. All right, so there's the regular fitting back on. Next step, you take and you turn and you remove the top. You can see all these gold beads. These gold beads are what's in the softener. And you can see also how they get caught up into the cap. You have to get this cap really clean because you see that little, there's a little O-ring in here. And if you do not clean this out properly and you put this back on to seal it, it's going to leak. So be sure that this is always clean. This is what we're gonna regenerate with. I go to Walmart and I buy two of these. You can use iodized salt or plain salt. I use plain salt. It's just my preference. And I've learned, you know that little metal spigot thing here you, pour, you pull out of here? Those things are useless. So you take a box cutter and you come down here and you just cut the whole top out. And this is gonna take two of these cans. Now there are many ways you can add salt. Some people will put it into a pitcher of water. They'll pour it in there, stir it, pour it in, pour it in. I do not like that method. I use it right out of the can and I pour it in slowly. 
and then I'll rock it. And you see how that water splashes up? And it'll go right in there. And that water will mix with that salt and take it right down. And I keep doing this until I put in two full containers. Okay, so we've got our two cans of salt in here. And if you are in a place where you have hard water, you want to add iron out. The directions with the on-the-go water softener, they say, it, you know, it depends. If you're in a real hard area, two to four teaspoons. Moderate hardness, one to two. I've learned I just use two, no matter where I am. When I regenerate, I get my teaspoon, I come in here, I get up here, and I'll just pour in two teaspoons of iron out. This is really good for your system. So now I'll add a little more water just to wash that down, put my cap back on, and now we're going to stream the water out here about the size of a pencil, very, very slow stream for about 25 minutes. Okay, this is the stream you're looking for. We're gonna do this for about 20, 25 minutes. Okay, so we finished doing the slow rinse, which was a small little stream about the size of a pencil. Now we're going to open that water valve all the way and let that water really stream through here. And this is what's called a fast rinse. We're going to do this for about 10 minutes. Okay, so we've done a 25 minute slow rinse and now we've done about an eight or a 10 minute fast rinse. Let's go ahead and test our water right out of the softener. We're going to take our test strip, and this particular kind of test strip says to hold it in there for one second. And look, it's right where it needs to be. So now that we know that our water is good, we're going to turn it off, hook up the hose, and we'll be good to go. And there you have it. Both hoses hooked up. It's regenerated. We're good for another three months. So if you're looking for a fantastic, good-tasting, safe water system, this is it. It's filtered with three filters. It goes through the water softener and into the coach. And it'll even fill up your onboard water tank with that same good filtered water. Fantastic system. Now another little power tip here. Uh, about a year ago, I did this same process. Two cans of salt, back flushed, filled it back up, blah, 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 exactly what you just saw, went and retested my water, and it's still red high. In that case, you have to do what they call a special regeneration. And what you do is you use four cans of salt, okay? You double the portion, and then you still do a full flush for about eight minutes, then do a pencil size for about 25 minutes, and put the cap back on, and so on and so on. And that worked. So when you do that regeneration and it still doesn't read right, that means you have been using some really hard water and you gotta do a double dose. Okay, so you see how easy that was? I mean, it really takes hardly any effort at all. Uh, some of the final comments I wanna make is, all it took was a two quart pitcher, some iron out, a teaspoon measure, two containers of salt at about 54 cents a piece at Walmart and you have to have a, a bottle of these test strips. Now a word on these test strips. We keep these in the kitchen and I highly recommend that you check your water every couple of three weeks. See I dropped the ball this time. I never usually ever let it get that red and I just happened to ask Joni last night uh, you know when the last time we checked it was and I checked it and we were, I usually always change it way back in here. Last night it was way up there. So it's a good idea every couple of weeks, fill up a cup of water, take a test strip and see where you are. Then you're gonna know when you're gonna have to regenerate the softener again. Some people who have larger coaches have the, uh, the luxury of mounting this inside of a bay, your, your water softener. We didn't have that luxury. Um, I didn't want to take up the room again, and I didn't want to add that additional weight. So what we do is we carry this behind the passenger seat 
on the floor in the back seat. Uh, for us, it works out great. When we get to our destination, I just pick it up, I take it to the back, put the two hoses on, connect my water, I'm done. If you're interested in getting a water softener, an on-the-go water softener, the custom-made hoses, the filtering system, all that stuff, if you'll just go to the top of the page and see where the description text is, you'll see show more, click that, scroll down, I'll have the links all right there, very easy. So that wraps it up on how to regenerate a double standard on-the-go water softener. So until next time, this is RV Street, stick around. <music>